Hi there. This one is a quick update video on our new S1 Pro by FL Sun. In the last installment, we showcased a bunch of things we printed in just the very first week. It would have been amazing to show how this tall statue of Levy printed. But even though I'm pretty sure I enabled time lapse, the footage was nowhere to be found at the end of the print. So, how can I show it to you now? No, I haven't reprinted it. I'll tell you why it was missing, how we figured it out, and how I managed to get this perfect footage now, something that can actually apply to any 3D printer, Delta, Core XY, or even a Batslinger. Now that I think of it, this might just be the ultimate way to create time lapses for Batslingers, even if your printer doesn't have a camera. This is Gergo. And you're watching Gergo Print 3D, our YouTube channel mainly focused on 3D printing but also covering laser cutting and other DIY projects. We already have a long list of videos for you to check out. I made sure the subtitles are accurate even in this short video so you can understand me better. I've just received various brands of TPU from AliExpress to test on my printers, including the S1, the K2 there in the back, and even a mystery printer right behind me. Affordable TPU from Sunlu, King Rune, and GTAC compared with Polymaker TPU. So that is also in the works, but for this video, let's still focus on the S1 Pro. There are a lot of amazing things about this printer. Speed, quality, feature set, aesthetics, I already shared my first impressions in the previous two videos, so be sure to check those out. However, time-lapse functionality is not one of this machine's strength. Yes, FSON is making progress. On this Pro model, time-lapses are no longer limited to a single file that gets overwritten with every print, like in the standard S1 firmware. Here, they are saved for each print, and it's really fun to watch them directly on the device screen. They are also accessible remotely via the FSON Word mobile app. However, they are missing from the web interface. If you want to get the video onto your PC, you either need to use the USB stick or download it to your phone and transfer it from there. I've made a video on time lapses in Standard Clipper. Mainsail has a dedicated page where we can watch and download time lapses. The Moonraker time lapse component provides a robust system for this. I really don't understand why FSON and other companies choose to replace this with their own proprietary solutions, but they do. And while some of our prints generated beautiful time lapses, others didn't, even though I was sure I enabled the option on the device screen. This is why I can just use the upload and print command from Orca Slicer or even FSON's own slicer. If we start the print from the slicer, there is no way to enable time lapse. Instead, we've gotten into the habit of just uploading the model first, then walking over to the printer and selecting the file from the device screen. The files are listed in reverse chronological order, so the newest G code appears at the top. That's actually convenient. Then on the next screen, we have to enable the time-lapse option, which is disabled by default. And here's where things get confusing. Even when the option is off, there's still a check mark next to it. When you tap it, the option changes from white to blue. That's when it's enabled. All other toggles in the UI use standard switch controls, but this one is color-coded instead. And why is white off and blue on? not very logical. In my search for why some prints didn't generate time lapses, I even questioned my own sanity, wondering if I had mixed up the colors and accidentally left the option disabled. So I started using the FS on Word app on my phone to remotely start prints. This is actually nice because it saves me a trip to the printer and I don't have to sit on the floor to interact with it or ask my little nephew to do it for me. I still need to upload without printing from the slicer on my PC. Then on my phone, I open FS on Word, go to the local files, and I tap print. 
Here, the time lapse option is a regular checkbox control, although it really should be square shaped. Radio buttons are supposed to be the round ones, but close enough. It's off by default, and there is no way to change the default on the phone either. But at least here, we can be sure that we actually turned it on. And even though I was sure I turned it on, for some prints, the video file still didn't show up in the list. I contacted FLSON tech support and they responded very quickly, asking me to send them a system log, which I'm still not sure how to create. When I go to the log section on the device screen, I see a single TXT file dated weeks ago. Selecting it brings up the option to download it to a USB drive, but only if the drive is plugged in before selecting the file. Tapping this presents the option to either download the selected old log file or all logs, which I then sent to the FS on technicians. I probably would have figured out the issue on my own if these log files weren't encrypted. Too bad they are. Anyway, at least support got back to me fairly quickly, highlighting a Chinese comment indicating that the time lapse had been created for my last print. They didn't have any further suggestions, but this was enough for me to take a long, hard look at my prints, both with and without time lapses, and apply a little programming experience. If the time lapse was generated, the problem must be with the part of the program that lists and uploads these videos. For some reason, it doesn't display some of the files. Time lapses use the same file name as the G codes they recorded, just with an MP4 extension. See if you can spot the issue. I got time lapses for all these files in the past. The first that failed were the left eye and left feet for Levy's penguin. Then we do have the time lapse for the face and door, but not for his sister's drinking horse vase. We have time lapses for these PTG prints, but none for the statue or egg dispenser, except for that one failed print of a tiny test statue that I canceled where I tested my theory and it does have its time lapse. Now, see the pattern? Before I reveal the answer and the various workarounds, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy these types of adventures. Thank you if you did. The big reveal. All the files that have spaces in their file names are missing their time-lapse videos. They probably exist somewhere in the system taking up storage space, but they are not listed so we cannot even erase them. Somehow the space character trips up a part of their code, most likely a makeshift patch for the original S1 firmware that attempts to rename the last created time-lapse to match the G-code file name so it's not overwritten at the next print. Except it fails when the file name contains a space. They've promised to fix this in a future firmware update, but there are so many things FSON could have done better. Simply use the well-tested Moonraker time-lapse component of Clipper. Give us low-level access to the system so we can fix these kinds of small mistakes. Or at least provide unencrypted log files so we wouldn't need their assistance to debug our own printer. And I've suggested all of these to their team, but for now, there are three things that we can do. Simply avoid using spaces or other special characters in our G-code file names. That's very easy. Just double check and correct them in the upload dialog box in Orca or FS on Slicer. Two, maybe our lost time lapses will magically turn up after a future firmware update. Without low level SSH access, there is no way for us to retrieve them for ourselves. On fully open Sovol and GD Tech printers and optionally open Creality printers, these files would be 
all accessible. And this is why we need to push FS on to open their system. Three, and this is the most interesting, I did show you the time lapse, even though I didn't reprint the statue. It's a simulation. So good that it might actually be a better alternative, especially on bed slingers, where you'd otherwise need to park the print head between takes. I moved the effector or tool head near the print bed, then used my GoPro to film as it pumped to the top of the device. Without even stopping the recording or moving the camera, I simply placed the finished print on the build plate and waited a little. The rest is movie magic, done with DaVinci Resolve or any other video editor by overlaying the image of the finished print with an animated crop of the tool head's motion. It looks smoother and higher resolution than any built-in time-lapse, and your printer doesn't even need a camera to do it. What do you think? Are these fakes? Is time-lapse proof that a certain printer can print something? If so, then this is misleading. But if time-lapses are simply a way to showcase our prints and printers, then this is just an alternative method to achieve the same effect, even at a higher quality. Leave a comment, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. A big thank you to FSM for providing this printer and for putting up with my criticism. Hey, and that is my tool brush. Is it? I hope to bring value to them as well as to the user community with improvements and workarounds like these. You can support us in these endeavors in multiple ways, watching all our videos to the end, leaving likes and comments, and using our affiliate links in the description below, and not using Honey, which steals affiliate commission from creators like us. None of which costs you extra, but we are especially grateful to those of you who go the extra mile and buy us a coffee or hot chocolate for Levy on coffee.com. These contributions make it possible for us to keep making these videos. Big, big thank you. This is the third video I've made about the FS on S1 Pro. You'll find them all in this playlist, or you can support us by watching this funny video where I make a lot of mistakes creating a Go game board set. Speaking of Go, let's go print 3D. You didn't see that coming. Thanks for watching another Gergo Print 3D video all the way to the end.